We've unlocked paradise off the island's beaten path. Welcome to Bali. No, this isn't a video about beach resorts and parties, though that does sound like a good idea. We're escaping the tourist hotspots for a five day motorbike trip in the islands north for some of the best that Bali and even Indonesia has to offer. Rice fields, volcanoes, waterfalls, and temples. Now let's roll. We are on the east side of Bali before we start trekking to the north. And this right here is the mysterious bat temple it's one of the six most important temples in all of bali bali is a hindu religion island surrounded by indonesia that's all muslim it's a unique island and this is a unique temple this temple was established in the 11th century that's good and all but you're wondering what the heck is so special about this one well it was built around a cave and in that cave right here behind me you can hear them all there are thousands of bats they're chirping away at night they swoop around this is the bat temple now I know what you're thinking cathedrals temples mosque what's the point point? and I somewhat agree with you but for me the architecture is fascinating and within these structures you can better understand the history of a civilization. Indonesia and indeed Bali is located near the equator, just south of the equator. And of course it gets massive amounts of rainfall, especially what we know of in the winter months. There are volcanoes. It's a lush tropical island, maybe similar to Hawaii in the United States. All the main ingredients you need to have beautiful waterfalls. It is just the sound of cascading water down into a pool down this way. Hiking up here, there's a smaller kids pool we could call it and then up here is where the adults play it's here within the heart of nature you can really find yourself and this is the Ye Labu waterfall one of many really that you can find all in this part of East Bali before you start heading up to the north and look at that thing this one is pretty easy to access there's a long motorbike path to get down here then you do a hike of about 300 meters if you do some boulder hopping, you'll see all these little different VIP pools where you can hang out, bring up a cold beer along the way, and then just soak in the nature up here. I mean, this is stunning. This is what people dream about when they dream about coming to Bali. Natural beauties like this. Waterfalls, volcanoes, rice fields. And here we have one of the wonders of Bali. This waterfall is off the beaten path, but I did find a couple up here. They're camping, cooking out. See you guys later. Enjoy the waterfall. Bye. Bye. Whoop, and we're out of here. I'm not really sure how I found Ye Labu waterfall. I was doing a lot of research on Bali before touching down here and starting this motorbike trip. Research always pays off. I left home without uh, any sunblock or sunscreen today, so I just stopped to put on my jacket so my arms and face is not getting roasted. waterfalls once I was leaving there I was checking on Google Maps for something a little bit different I want to show you especially before tomorrow we start heading north towards the northern end of Bali because this could be some of our last time to get some beach action and this particular beach well just one second this slice of paradise is dubbed the white beach crystal clear waters, waves gently coming in, and of course, the white sand. This untouched vibe is a stark contrast to some of Bali's other beaches. And of course, the difference here is the white sand, unlike that black volcanic ash sand that you see around the island. You know what they say, wander where the Wi-Fi is weak and your soul's refreshed. I think this place hits the spot. Ah, fresh coconut. You got the spoon to scrape out the coconut meat afterwards. You know, when you see a beach like this place and you're on your motorbike trip, by all means, stop at the beach and enjoy it for a bit. For information on how much the motorbike rental cost and how much I'm paying for the whole trip, 
in the second video of this series. Stick around for that video coming up after this one's published because I'll dive into all those details. Right now, it's all about this coconut. Mm. Oh yeah. This might be the best coconut I've ever had. <laughs> from Bali and this is a great way to start the day because right behind me we have the highest peak on the island a volcano Mont Agoon I'm not sure if you can see it through those palm trees there over here rice fields rice fields all around farmers working away harvesting the rice right as we speak what a peaceful way to start the morning So I was gonna try to show you around this hotel last night, but I was wiped out, I was tired, and I just got back here after a quick dinner and crashed. Got up early for a reset and a restart for today, and today's gonna be pretty awesome. This place, it's in Bangli, it's called Eko Tre Tradi, and I'll put the link to this hotel and all the hotels down in the description. And in the next video in the series, I'll break down the cost and the prices on all these places. This place, well, I've already kind of trashed the room. I took some footage of it yesterday after they made it up. It has about 10 different units. There are about eight of those are these huts, these massive huts bigger than this room. There'd be cool double decker to stay in. I took some excellent drone footage of them and the whole surroundings and the rice fields and the volcano this morning. So you can see it there. There are two different villas here perched up on the water and I have one of them here pretty cool place about an hour and a half from the airport itself and it's a peaceful type atmosphere exactly what you want in bali especially on a motorbike trip when you want to chill out for one night before the next day's ride On our way, another day in Bali. Named the temple Pura Basaki. Pura Basaki. Yeah, the biggest it, one in Bali. It's the biggest and yes. probably the most important, yes, I would imagine. Course. And it's nestled on the hillside temple from of here, the volcano. About one kilometer the temple. Let's and go. The temple, I get information. We're right. at the base of Bali's most famous yeah, temple, the, the most religious site here yeah, in Bali. Yeah. Built, uh, started was, to be constructed built, in the 8th century. Yes, 8th century by Rasi Markandia. I'm struck by how dramatic this is. We have the palm trees, we have the temple, the construction, and in the background, the volcano, which unfortunately right now is covered by clouds. This morning we had a good view of it, but it's a dramatic setting and kind of one of those things that you need to get off the beaten path in Bali to see this place. Now, I know we discussed yesterday why cathedrals, why mosque, why temples? Well, I think it helps you get a better understanding of the culture and the history of a location when you visit. And here we're really stepping into the past, Mari. Yeah, Mari. Okay, as tourists, we can't go in this area here. This is where they're praying, but you get a look at the, what we're referring to as the pagodas here. They're shaped like the volcano mountain behind. There are a few of them in there. People are praying and we're making our way around this gigantic structure. So we're getting up to the seventh and final terrace of the Pura Basaki, or what's called the Basaki Temple. Just all these pagodas dotted along. Back behind us is another temple, and that's the local family's temple. So this, this stone here is the vol volcanic stone from the big volcano there. When's the last eruption of that volcano? 1963. Do we need to worry? It's not gonna, okay, it'll blow on the other side. I'm not even going to try to say the name of this side temple over here. I, this is why I have my guide. To say, what's the name of this temple, this Pura? Uh, Pura Batu Madag. Pura Batu Madag. Pura Baknu Madag. Madag. No man walking around like this, but today I hired a videographer, so good team, man. Thanks. Good team. The guide comes with the price of a mission for the temple. I paid 90000 to enter, and it really helps out because you get some explanation of the history of this place, and you get through it a lot quicker, too. Otherwise, you'd probably get lost in this labyrinth of temples that's in here.
Guys, this northern side of Bali is stunning. We left the big temple and you go up a mountain road and as soon as you get up to the top of that mountain road, it's kind of cold, but you're greeted with this stunning view, a huge lake and off in the distance, I think that's Mount Bator and that's what I want to climb today. I'm so happy I'm up here and on a motorbike just exploring these different roads and, and seeing what it has to offer this side of the island, getting away from the southern side where all the tourism is and just exploring. I just arrived at this place here and it's at the foot of a lava field and of course Mount Bador and the clouds are clearing up on the top. Fingers crossed I can get up there today. This is breathtaking and this is also Bali in December because this little place right here and it's not that expensive at all is empty right now. I have the whole place to myself. Lava fields spread out below me. Mount Bator over that way right there. It's just quiet. You hear the sounds of motorbikes off in the distance. The sounds of roosters. I'm sure they're gonna wake me up tomorrow. Oh, yeah, it's relaxing. Oh, if you could see the volcano there, there is an option of going up there, waking up at 3 a.m. or some ungodly hour, hiking up there so you can see the sunrise from Mount Bator. But the other option is just to get up there now to the guard shack and hike up to the top, about a 30 minute hike. The only thing is I hear thunder off in the distance. It's clear up on top of the volcano now. So I hope everything goes okay because I'm going up there now. Sometimes the best journey is the one where you follow your heart. If you guys haven't seen, I'm putting out a regular email newsletter with all sorts of travel tips and hacks, stuff like this, like hiking up to the top of a volcano and stories from my adventures around the world. You can get all sorts of details in there, tips that you can use for your next adventure that you plan. Also, every now and then, discounts on my PDF guides. So if you wanna check it out, there's a link to join the newsletter down in the description below. Hey, this is gonna be fun to the top of a volcano. I think the last time for like five years, I lived in Portland and Oregon and I would ride my bike, also hiked up to the top of Mount Hood. Anyways, the mountains up in the Pacific Northwest, done those. This is a new one for me. Southeast Asia, volcano, here we come. How many meters, 1717? Yeah, 1717. Okay, 1717 meters. Yeah. We gotta get hiking. So we started our way up. It should be about 700 meters of elevation gain. I have a good tour guide here. Oh, okay. Uh, let's do it. Yeah. You said the last time this exploded was 2000, but the last big, explosion of the volcano was 1963. So he was just telling me that he hikes up every day, sometimes twice a day. So you know he's super fit and I can see it. He's just leaving me behind. Fingers crossed. We're gonna get clear sky at the top. Beautiful view. Over there is Mont Abang. It once was smaller and now it's bigger. It's now the big brother to this one. Things to consider, well, the rainy seasons, I mean, right now, the winter time, what our normal winter, it's the rainy season here in Bali, but sometimes it'll only rain a couple hours a day. Today, we haven't had a big storm yet. Fingers crossed it doesn't storm on us. So just plan accordingly when you're here in Bali to do this hike, but you can do it on most days. You did it. Wow. Against the backdrop of this dramatic sky, we've conquered the summit. Yeah, it wasn't that hard. It's not as hard as I'm making it out to be. Only 1,770 meters, and we started around 1530 thereabouts and some change. If you've liked this video so far, please give it a thumbs up down below because it's a trip, a pleasure up here in Indonesia on this part of Bali. Also, I know it's a vanity metric to see how many subscribers one has, but a lot of you aren't yet subscribed to the channel. So if you haven't yet subscribed, take this moment down there to click that subscribe button. It helps so you see the upcoming videos, you're notified if you're subscribed. Also helps me because the more subscribers I have means the greater reach my videos will have. It has more momentum with my videos. So hit that subscribe button down there. Bam, right over here is the massive biggest crater. I think from the 1904 explosion is what my guide was saying. Just a big, massive crater, a big hole in the ground. Over there we see smoke coming up as well. 
just a reminder that these volcanoes are living, breathing things up here in Bali and you have to pay your respect and homage to them. Uh, Bali, your picturesque lush rice fields, temples, waterfalls and volcanoes rising up all around. We've unlocked paradise off the island's beaten path. Yeah.